So let's review some of the things about metapopulations and habitat fragmentation relevant to landscape ecology. Landscape ecology is the spatial distribution of individuals, populations, and communities. I should say the study thereof. And studies in landscape ecology look at the causes of and consequences of those spatial patterns. Looking at different scales, different spatial scales, gives us a spatially explicit approach versus the typical field approach of sampling on the ground and getting data. As this figure from our book shows, a landscape is really a patchwork of different habitats, sometimes occurring more or less regularly over the landscape, sometimes different habitats, a certain habitat is unique. And in this picture you can see how in the meadow habitat a grid has been superimposed to sample plots of vegetation there. And depending on the approach you take, sampling more and more plots, as is accomplished in the mean field approach, or the spatially explicit approach, stepping back from fine scale to larger scale, both can give good approximations of the total number of species sampled, sometimes more or less accurate depending on the scale. Just like we talked about dispersion of individuals in ecology, aggregation patterns are important in landscape ecology. Maximal dispersion is shown where patches are not adjacent. Minimal here where they're not overlapping at all and random without, you know, sometimes next to another patch of the same habitat, sometimes next to the other one. So we look at both grain, the size of the primary unit of view or sampling, and extent. Extent is the total range over which whatever pattern we're looking at has, is examined or it occurs. The focus or resolution is related to the sampling level or the area represented by each data point. I think it's important to keep in mind some of the principles of island biogeography and species area relationships when we're looking at landscape ecology too. In this model, MacArthur and Wilson sought to predict the number of species in a habitat or on an island based on the size of that island and its isolation from other islands or the mainland. You'll remember that the equilibrium number of species of any island is determined both by its distance and area. And so for island A1 here, its species number equilibrium number of species is determined by its distance from the mainland and its actual size. If we compare it with A2, which is bigger but the same distance away, the assumption is that immigration rate will be the same because there's the same distance, but that extinction rate will be greater for the smaller island so that the smaller island will have a smaller equilibrium number of species than the larger island. And when we compare A1 and A3, A3 is the same size as A1, but it's closer. So because it's closer, it will have a higher ex immigration rate. And the same extinction rate because they're the same size, but because of that reason it will also have greater number of species than island one. So the equilibrium model equation takes into account the size of the species pool available and assuming continuing extinction and replacement 
with larger species pool and immigration rate, the mean equilibrium number of species is bigger. If the extinction rate is larger, the equilibrium number of species is smaller. In more recent view of these uh, predictions, we realize that there are curved relationships rather than linear, and we can also add the rescue effect, that is, the closer the closer an island is, the lower, the more likely it is for the rescue effect to take place. And the target effect may also take place that the bigger the island is, the greater immigration will be without regard to distance away. So in any island, in any place, we have population dynamics with stochasticity or chance that the number of deaths might exceed the rate of births in many smaller populations. And this is very significant for endangered species conservation. Now let's say a few words about metapopulations. It was thought before the work of Levens in the 60s that populations all functioned as one big population. But it, he realized that many populations were subdivided and there were dispersal among the subpopulations, sometimes sporadic interactions. But a population is seen as a population of populations distributed in space that interact with each other. And in this picture, P and A stands for present or absent. In the lingo of metapopulation biology, if there are some individuals of a species present, that patch is on, it's blinking on, if, if it's colonized, and it blinks off when things are extinct, locally extinct. However, any suitable patch could be recolonized, so it could blink on again. So there might be benefits for species to have metapopulations because not all of the eggs are in one basket, not all the individuals are in one habitat, one patch. And the proportion of sites occupied in a metapopulation is a balance between extinction and colonization, just like in the theory of island biogeography. So the first idealized model assumed all the subunits exchange individuals equally. But in many situations, the core satellite model is probably more realistic. With the core, a good place where new individuals are always being produced, providing immigrants for satellite populations which might bring, blink off regularly with migrants colonizing these satellite populations via what might be called a propagule rain. Because of this propagule rain, the persistence of many species may rely on metapopulations. But for this to work, the satellite populations can't be too far away. The patch is more likely to be occupied the closer it is to an occupied patch. So these are different ways of saying it, mainland and islands, core and satellites, source and sink, the source being a good place where lots of individuals are produced, the sink, places where individuals go to and eventually um, die or have to leave because the resources run out. So this is reestablishment via density-dependent processes operating in the source or mainland populations. As populations there get too big, individuals have to move. Propagules end up at other sites.